Body Island Lighthouse. Its lamp, a welcome beacon to mariners along our state's outer banks, who can see its flash from the Gulf Stream 13 miles out and from as far away as 19 miles. The old lighthouse has stood four square on its island perch since 1872. The land around it pretty much unchanged since that time. The island was named after a family who spelled their name B-O-D-Y, and the name stuck, if not the spelling. While a climb to the top has never been officially available, the lighthouse was in such poor shape in recent years that visitors weren't allowed to climb up the spiral staircase at all. They could only stand in the entranceway and imagine the view from the top. But for a few people, climbing the stairs is part of their job. Charlie Sellers worked for a number of years as chief of maintenance at Body and is quite familiar with its renovation needs. What we're finding on some of the treads is where they're cracked. One of the things that, that plagues just about every painted masonry structure is obviously water infiltration. All the windows will be either reworked uh, to repair them or we'll replace them if we have to. Moisture's dancing partner in the continuing deterioration of the lighthouse is, of course, wind. Well, we think that Hurricane Alex was probably the straw that broke the camel's back. It started rocking the top of the lighthouse just enough that it pushed those pieces loose. This is a piece of the belt course that had fallen off of the top of the lighthouse after Hurricane Alex. The area Charlie's referring to is the transition point between brick and metal just above the windows at the eighth level of the lighthouse. You can see part of the cabling forming a temporary fix just outside the window. And to relieve undue pressure on the lighthouse drum, where the full weight of everything above rests on the brick column, a problem caused by rusting of structural ironwork. Yeah, here's the best one right here. Definitely. Finally, some two years later, money for renovation has become available. And Doug Stover arrives on the scene. Here's a good example of some of the old cracked stair treads. His job? To oversee the restoration and make sure the standards of the Historic Preservation Act are met. Total restoration of this structure promises to be a huge undertaking. During the restoration, what you're going to see here, this balcony, pretty much from this point up, is all going to be completely replaced, all the metal. You can see up here some of the balcony that's just barely hanging on now. So You can see the broken glass in the lens room. Ah, the lens, the crowning glory of this lighthouse since 1872. The French-designed Fresnel lens was a relatively new invention when it was installed and is said to be one of the most intact, if not the best preserved, of operational Fresnel lighthouse lenses on the East Coast. Restoration of the light begins by removing the lens and storing it out of harm's way. So, on this September morning, the light will go out and not switch back on for perhaps two years or more. Well, this is the first time uh, since 1871 that this Body Island Lighthouse light has been turned off. It's never been removed before from the lighthouse. We've been studying it for some time, and we brought in some of the experts that deal with lenses. We'll take it apart panel by panel, and we'll crate it, and we'll bring it down to this level. And then the day arrived for work to begin. First step, removing the lens, panel by panel. A delicate task that required both expertise and patience. All right, here we go. A prism had fallen out as they edged the panel away from the lens. Joe! Yeah. We need you here now. They have to act fast. You guys got support of the lens, right? Yeah, we yeah. can come off. Wait a minute, just smash my finger, hold on. Get the lever move. Straight All right, out. ready? There it's out. The panel gets a protective plastic wrap to hold the remaining prisms in place. And the loose prism gets rolled up in a blanket. Okay, we're ready, Nick? Then down the stairs, it all goes. Oh, so carefully. 
Next, it's boxed, marked, All right, these are down. and moved down one more level. Does not look okay? Yeah. The steps have been edged with PVC pipe to help skid the panel down and prevent the valuable artifact from coming in contact with cast iron. Now the next critical step begins. The box is lowered through the center of the lighthouse. Looks like it's doing well, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. 80, 60. All right. There we go. 15 more to go. With the lens safely removed, the really serious restoration work gets underway. A joint effort between two companies. Enter Jeff Ashton, project superintendent and an expert on all facets of this restoration, including the elaborate scaffolding needed to work on a structure this tall. The scaffolding is engineered not only for safety, but to prevent punctures of the lighthouse's historic fabric. In a preservation project, you want to make sure you do not penetrate historic fabric, that is anything that has been a part of the historic structure. And what was approved was simple blocks that are put into uh, light compression around the entire building. And you'll see those back here. It's just a wood block. It, it just gives a little added structural integrity. So that's a minor point, but it's an important point in terms of, of what preservation is all about. The scaffolding has something like 2,000 separate pieces and took 45 days to install during the winter to OSHA specifications, of course. A canvas shroud is installed on the top of the lighthouse to keep the lead paint from blowing into the estuary and to condition the air and to keep workers out of the elements. Once the cast iron decking was removed, one tremendously complicated and critical task is removing years and years of lead paint accumulation, which is blasted off with sand and suctioned into barrels that can be disposed of safely. It all adds up to several weeks of tedious work. Removing the paint has exposed the original lime wash on the walls. That turns out to be a significant find. One of the engineers determined that we should actually paint inside the lighthouse. Well, if you apply a solid paint onto that whitewash, it's not going to give a good seal. So we decided uh, to keep with the original historic method. The lime wash basically stays up here, and we'll come back and apply a coat of lime wash and two finished coats on top of that. Another discovery, some two dozen or so of the old cast iron treads on the circular stairs need replacing. The treads will be removed, melted down, recast, and put back. A very green 21st century reuse of 19th century materials. The foundry chosen for the recasting job has unique experience. They did the restoration work on a lighthouse identical in design in St. Augustine, Florida. This is the old step, and you can see why it's being replaced. It's got a hole in it. Frankly, these steps were not designed to take thousands of people walking up and down them. They normally had one lighthouse keeper and an assistant, and they went up two or three times a day. That was the extent out of it. We have the old drawings from 1871 of this step. There's eight flights that need attention, and each flight, since it's a, a conical shape, each flight is slightly different. So I'm gonna start with the largest, and then I'll trim down and adjust and use this for all eight flights. Another casting assignment is changing a ventilation component from cast iron to brass to help alleviate the constant moisture problem inside the lighthouse. And the way air comes in is through these holes, which were drilled out after the brass was cast, and it goes through this area here there's vent holes in the very cap of the roof of this, and that's where the air went out. This is a design change based on what happens when uh, your design fails. Thanks in part to the lack of ventilation, 
time and tide have had their way, allowing moisture to get at even some of the key structural components, which were found to be in worse shape than originally thought. Each one of the 16 sections of the belt course, which is what this is right here, has the same cracking pattern. Here's another example, the next one over, same exact crack situation. And there was some movement that happened and this whole section had fallen off completely and it was just hanging uh, by this cable right here. If we are requested to remove all these brackets, everything is taken down to this level and all this metal work is taken out, all this masonry work is taken out, but something has to be done because of these cracks, because it's a structural issue. I think most everybody knows why we're here. All these newly revealed problems led to a sort of summit meeting of the agencies and contractors involved to determine the next course of action. All of us can live with that decision, whatever it is. The decision was made to make and install additional identical brackets between the originals, correcting a 19th century design flaw and considerably increasing the long-term strength of the structure. Of course, the money and time required have now also increased, but the result will be a much stronger and longer-lasting lighthouse. When this renovation is finished, the Body Island Lighthouse will have been given a new lease on life. And at long last, people will be able to climb to the top of their lighthouse and look out on one of the most spectacular views in our state. Mm -hmm.